Next, we will take a look at the folder connector. This is also one of the super cool feature that is available in Power BI Desktop, which one the folder connector option. With this folder connector option, you can load multiple files from a folder in one go using your Power BI Desktop, okay? For example, if I wanted to load any data, for example, if the data is several comma separated value files, I need to select it here. I need to select the appropriate connector here. So I need to click on this. I need to load uh, the files that um, that I needed. Okay, W0 folder CSV. So this is a kind of file, right? I need to click on it and then I need to load it. If I have 20 files or 50 files, if you have a lot of files are there, at your disposal and if you want to load for example 25 files are there in a folder if you want to load these 25 files the one option is you can go here and select this one okay or the if you want to load the excel file you can click on it but here in you will have to load each and every file one after other it is a it is a painful task right loading the files multiple files one after other and sequentially it will take longer time. And there could be chances you might tend to forget to load some files also because you have a lot of uh, files are available. So in that case, what happens? The folder connector is um, very much handy in that kind of situation. You can click on the more here. Look here, all in the all option, you have something called folder here. Folder, okay. Select the folder, okay, and you hit the connect. Look here, here you don't, you don't, you'll not be able to see the folder connector option, okay. If to load the Excel file, you can select it. This is the connector that is available. These are the different connectors, okay. And the text file, you can use it. Web data, you can use it. But uh, here you don't see the folder connector. You need to click on the more option here and you need to wait for some time it will take for a while okay you will not find any progression bar or load uh, you know icon that doesn't mean it is not working you'll have to have a lot of patience you need to wait okay so in the first option is all if you select file you will see all the file related connectors and all will show you all connectors yeah, here, here also it is there, the folder connector, you just select this one. So this is your folder path, you need to specify your folder path. For example, here in my case, file explorer. D folder D and here NC sales, NC daily sales, right? You just select this one and then you select this folder name, okay? I just put this folder name here. The idea of uh, this one, right? How it works, the folder connector option is in case of any files that are available in this folder, right? All the files, all the files that are available in this folder will be picked up automatically. In addition, in case of any other subfolders are available, right? Any other files that are available inside the subfolders, it will pick up that one as well. The files from the main folder and the files from the subfolder also picked up automatically with this folder connector option, okay? I'm going to hit the OK button now. You will find four buttons now in the data preview window. Look here, here it shows the three files. Feb CSV, March CSV, April CSV. Here, Feb CSV, March CSV, and uh, you also have April CSV, but this one is available under the subfolder of your NC daily sales, EPR. Look here, I just press enter. Look here, can you see it?
APR dot Feb March APR dot CSC. Okay. Here, if you see at the bottom, cancel. When you hit this button, cancel, it will not get loaded. And then when you hit this transform data, it will take you to the Power Query Editor where you can do the data transformation and everything. But uh, you have another option called Combine and Load. This option here itself, we can combine all these. You can, if you select these three, sorry, this one, this option, all these three files will get combined. Okay, and then it will take you to the Power Query Editor. Or else, you know, simply combine these two tables, these three tables, these three files, and then load it here. You have options, but what I do is I start with first load all the data, and then we will do the combine everything later. Okay, I'm going to hit the load button now. So what you are seeing in this case is uh, not the data, you are just seeing the metadata, okay? Already I have, uh, you know, loaded this one uh, that is for other batch. So what I will do is I will just show you the current one. Combine and load. So as the name suggests, it will combine uh, you know, multiple files into a single file and then it will load it. Before loading the data, it will combine all the file, three files data into a single file and then it will load it. That is the difference, combine and load. So NC daily sales two. This is the one. Okay, and if I expand this one, you know, you can see something different, right? This is very specific to the folder connector. Normally, when you load any file, CSV file or some, for example, this one, when you expand this one, you can see the columns that belongs to this file. You can see, but when it comes to folder connector, when you expand this, you will find the metadata. So to see the data, right, this one in detail, you can go to the data view and then you select uh, NC daily sales to. And here you can see the file names, Feb, March, April, and then the CSV file, okay? And then date access, date modified, date created. This is kind of a metadata, when this file got created, okay? And when it got modified and which subfolder, which all folders, these files are available. Fine, I got uh, some idea about this one right now. So the next thing is I just go here now and um, select the transform data. When I click on this one, it will open up the Power Query Editor. That is where we need to do data transfer, the ETL part. The TAT part, important is the transformation, data pre-processing part. Currently, we are in Power Query Editor, the Power Query when you select the transform data here, right? It will open up another window. The Power Query, though it is part of the Power BI desktop, for Power Query, it is available in a separate window, okay? So here I have already loaded a lot of queries. I'm going to select the NC daily sales to look at this is the one. What we have seen here, right? The same thing, we are seeing it in Power Query Editor also. This is the one is data view. This is the power query. This is where we can do all kind of uh, merging the data, appending the data. You can join the data. You can do data cleaning, data pre-processing, formatting, everything. ETL part, you can do it in the power query data. So now what I do is I can see something called content and then the name and the extension and then all the metadata, right? I don't need all this information. I'm going to select only this, um, not this one. If you hold the control key, you can select multiple columns. How to select multiple columns? You need to hold your control key and then select the columns. More than one column, you can select it. The rest of the columns, I don't need it. I just right click on it. You have a beautiful option here. Remove other columns, except the columns that I selected. Rest of them, you remove it. Remove other column. When I select this, the other columns, which I don't need it, it got deleted in a matter of seconds, right? I don't have to select each and everything to delete it. And then the next thing is uh, the content. You know, here, if you see here, you have an icon, something like this, the double down arrow. So when I hover the cursor on top of this, you can see the combined files. Now only I'm going to combine these three files data, okay, into a single file. 
Rashmi, are you able to understand combining all these three files into a single file? Okay. Yes. That is what combine. When you click on that icon, it will combine all the things. But before it combines the data, it shows the uh, it gives you the uh, preview window, data preview window, and you have a beautiful option here: skip file with errors. Okay. You can select it. So when this is helpful, can someone tell me skip files with errors? For example, here in this case, right, we have three files. Uh, in, 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 in this example, we have we are using very less data, but in real time scenario, you'll be using huge, huge volume data, especially in the case of month uh, data, right? This all the these files will hold will hold monthly data. Let's say your monthly data list, you know, volume is 10 million records. So 10 million, 10 million, 10 million. Let's assume that each file is having 10, 10 million records. Just because one or two records in your file, if that gets, that, that has some error, okay, the entire load will fail. Okay, even in case of any error in my data records, you can skip it, skip those records that have error in it and then load it. So that we can stick to the SLA. What is SLA? service level agreement you see where service level agreement is right each drop should load four hours in four hours time this is the thing in case of any delay it will seriously impact the business okay so four hours it should um, you know the you know each and every file should get uh, you know loaded in four hours each file should uh, should not uh, the load time should not exit more than four hours fine let's say you know uh, Three, uh, you know, three hours fifty minutes. All the data are being loaded up to three hours fifty minutes. The last ten minutes, what happened? Due to some error in few records, the entire load get failed. For example, the February month, you are loading it, and it, you know, it is, uh, you know, loading, loading. Uh, at the end of the fourth hour, right? Just before the fourth hour, if the job fails, just ten minutes before the fourth hour, right? If the job fails, what will happen? You will have to restart the data. When you restart the data, again, it will take another four hours. So rather what we do is, in case of any error is there in the data, you can skip it. Let's assume that if the error records are, you know, hardly you have 100 records, okay? And excluding the 100 records from your 10 million records, the, the rest of the records gets loaded successfully, Fine, good. This fixing this hundred records or reloading the hundred records will not take much time. That is the whole idea. So that is so that is the reason that these kind of options are very much helpful. And I'm going to hit OK now. When I hit OK, what this is just a preview window. You can see the sample data. Okay, and I'm going to hit OK here. So now what will happen is it will combine all these files data into a single file. Look here, all these things in a single file. Good. And if I want to see the total number of records that are available here, you select this transform ribbon here. And then you have something called count rows. Select this one, 3361. Okay, 3361. And on the right side, just beneath the apply steps, you can see this one, this step, okay? And I'm going to undo this one. How do I undo this one? Here, the control is that will not work. You need to click this cross icon to undo this one. Undo this step. Okay. So now I can see the data. Okay. Fine. Uh, three thousand. You know, all these three files got loaded here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and apply. And before that, let me check the quality of the data here. I just go here and see. Uh, okay, kind of okay. Oh, we don't see any much issues here. I'm going to, we have three options here. I'm going to close the Power Query Editor. And at the same time, apply all the steps. Well, these are the steps. See, these are the steps carried out by Power Query Editor itself. For example, if you see, when you load any file first time, right? If you click on the source, it will show what are the files that you have used it in this query or in this table, okay, three files. You know, where that um, files are resides, where those files resides in this folder. And next one is remove other columns. Yeah, this is the one we did it. 
right? So we removed a um, couple of columns which we don't need it, and uh, and also filtered hidden files when invoke custom function. Here we did not do anything. Simply we clicked on this. It automatically you know created another step, another thing here. I removed other columns, expanded table column one, all the things. These are the steps carried out by. See, only one step what we carried out was the removed other columns. Rest of the steps carried out automatically by Power Query Editor. So what is these steps? What are the data transformation that you do it, right? Each transformation, right, uh, we call this a step. These steps are recorded just beneath the applied step. It's kind of a CCTV in your apartment, right? You have CCTV. Uh, with the CCTV, you can find out who came first, who came later, right? Likewise, uh, in the apply Power Query Editor, it records each and every steps in sequential. So that later point in time, what transformation I did it here. For example, here, what column I removed it, okay. Yeah, now good, good. I removed those columns that were not relevant, right? You can refer it back. Now here, if you select this option, close and apply, what it, uh, what it means is you are going to close the Power Query Editor and then apply these steps to your data permanently. Something like commit in your SQL query or something called commit and roll back, right? Okay, we are done. Next, what I do is we loaded the data. Three months data we loaded. I just go to the, I just currently are in data view. I switch to the report canvas view. And here what I do is I just select the table visual. This is available under visualization screen. A lot of other charts are also available, but for the time being, I'm going to sell, click on the table visual. Here what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the columns here, the required columns in this table for my analytics. I just drop the sales here. So we can see that three months uh, data put together. The total sales was 5,13,000 or 513K. And then also it gives me the breakdown of the sales by category. In furniture, how much in total we made sales. In office supplies, how much in total we made sales. It gives me the breakdown of this total sales. Fine, everything is cool. Next, what I do is I just go to this folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file now. Okay, delete this file. I'm going to refresh it now. When you do refresh, it will reload all the files once again from that folder. Since I removed the file, that data is not available. Hence, that you know there will be a change in your total now. Because March and April file only is available, files are available there. With that existing file, what is the total sales? It will give you here. So many files are, ideally I should have disabled the refresh for other files, but anyhow, let it be there. If you see the total here from 513,000 to 17,000 dropped. Because in March and April files, you have oddly 88 records or 16 records are there. Okay. Okay, now what I do is I'll just uh, redo the same thing. For example, see here in this folder is something like your staging folder. What is staging folder? In the interest of uh, people do not having IT background, I just explain it. Others, please bear with me, okay? So the, this is your OLTP system, so system, OLTP, online transaction processing. Let's say you, are, you have an e-commerce website, Amazon or something, right? All the, uh, the orders raised by the customers, right? the transaction data that get loaded here on a daily basis, right? Every, every one minute, every minute, the transactions get you know, stored in this database, OLTP database. It can be Oracle, it can be, SQL Server. For the time being, let us assume that this is an SQL Server. This is your OLTP. OLTP is a logical name, okay? Online transaction processing. 
here what uh, we do is um, for analytics purpose we create another thing called data warehouse okay because already this database was uh, accessed by millions of people across the globe in the case of walmart or amazon or target if you see their e-commerce website uh, every 1 million every one hour 1 million transactions are happening that is what the status is given by walmart okay so in that case what will happen is uh, already multiple people across the time zones they are accessing the this, this uh, you know website and they are generating the orders they are cancelling the orders and so on already this database is swamped with um, you know um, serving or catering to the needs of different users on top if you perform your analytics against this database it will be uh, it will overburden this server so then what they did they create they came up with a concept called data warehouse in the data warehouse they kept the historical data here so that you can do like for like analysis like for like analysis what is current quarter sales what is the previous quarter sales i want to compare the current quarter revenue with the previous quarter revenue and also the profit with the previous quarter current quarter with previous quarter in order to compare the current quarter with previous quarter or current month with previous month or current quarter with the previous year same quarter you want to compare it you need to have the historical data here you cannot store the historical data because uh, this is meant for online transaction processing concurrency here the concurrency matters a lot concurrently multiple users will be eating this database hence don't keep huge volume of the data if you keep huge volume of the data the retrieval time will be very slow you will find a significant lag in retrieving the data right here the requirement is concurrency you need to design the database in such a way in in, in such a way right um, it should cope up with um, serving multiple users simultaneously concurrency is nothing but simultaneous okay hence the volume of data should be you know less here reasonable less it should not be like five year or ten year historical data whereas so right so that is the reason what they did the data warehouse is meant for analytics. They call it a whole app, online analytical process. This is meant for analytical purpose. For your internal people, right? They want MIS analysis, management information system, or each department, they want to do some kind of internal uh, analysis. Okay, in some cases, uh, even the external users will also be hitting this one, okay? This is meant for analytics, okay? This is meant for transaction day-to-day -day transactions, everything so even though it is a day-to-day -day, this database is um, data warehouse is a day-to-day -day, sorry uh, data historical data what we do is on a daily basis there are some data right we'll be loading it on a daily basis here to uh, to keep this database in sync with the data that are available in your source system table supposing you have order table is there whatever the orders raised by the you the users customers right on a daily basis that one will get copied here if you look at this uh, table right the order here we call a fact table order fact table something like that here you will be finding five years of data in it whereas in this order data right you will be finding maximum six to eight months data here that's all the recent data only will they'll be they will not be storing that they will not be keeping the historical data here again it depends on the the industry the banking, right? So in the case of banking, uh, all the customers, if you have 25 million customers, right? All these things should be available. That is a different thing altogether. Let's take the e-commerce scenario, okay? You here, eight, uh, you only you have eight months data are, are available here. Hence, retrieving the data is pretty faster. It's something like if I give a big book and ask you to find out uh, one specific topic, it will take longer time, right? If I give a very small book and if I ask you to search a specific talk, you can go and search it in a matter of few seconds, minutes, right? That, that's the thing. We don't store the historical data here. So this is for analytics. This is for transactions. In this case, what will happen is we are loading the data from uh, the OLTP to here, everyday data. 
maybe if I know, you know, the, some cases they load, they keep the five years data here. Okay. In some cases, in the case of banking and all right, they'll be using 10 years or 15 years, very huge data will be there here. Let's take the, 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 this case, e-commerce, let's say, you know, they are maintaining just five years data here. Even the five years data is also very, very huge. But uh, in, so for this, the data in this data warehouse should be kept in sync with the OLTP tables data right here. So that's why what we do is, you know, uh, so after uh, the, 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 as and when the users, the insert, the generate the transaction or generate any orders. So what we do is, you know, periodically, right, intraday load. So we load the data to our data warehouse. But we don't load it directly here. What we do is we load it to a staging area. Staging area. We have another thing called data lake. Data lake is gaining a lot of popularity. Data lake. I will discuss this later. Don't worry. So they don't load it directly to the data warehouse. Instead, what we do is we simply extract the data from our source system and then load it in a staging area. Okay. So and then what we do is we do the data, uh, you know, um, merging and then data cleaning, aggregation, all the things we do it here. Data pre-processing, we do it here. We process the data in the required format here. We will not load it as it is. If you load it as it is, you will end up with having so many tables here because it's all in the OLTP system, the data model design is different. The data warehouse system, the data model design is different. So we load all the tables and then we do, um, we join the tables, and we append the data and then we do all kind of uh, data pre-processing task here. And then once the data are available in the processed form, then we will load the data into a data warehouse. This is step one and step two. So what happens here uh, in this case, uh, let's assume that every month, the data or monthly data are getting you know pushed to your folder. Sometimes it's a database, it, sometimes it'll be a folder. In our case, the NC daily sales folder. Look here, this is the folder. This is your staging folder. Every month, the beginning, the previous month data will get pushed here. For example, currently we are in April. The previous month, entire data, uh, let's say you know, April 1st, the previous month data will get pushed automatically to this folder. They would have, they would have scheduled some job. Okay, every month beginning, everything is automated. Most of the things are automated. Okay, sorry, it's not everything. Most of the things are out there. That's one of the objectives of uh, the software, right? Um, advantages of um, uh, computerization. So they automate it. Every month beginning, the previous month data will get pushed here. As and when the data get pushed here, the files get pushed here, the folder connector is very much helpful, right? Uh, you can refresh the data. When you refresh it, whatever the new file that get pushed here, that one will also get you know, merged automatically. So in this case, I have meshed three files. The folder connector, I did not load each and every file. I did not, I don't have the pain of uh, locating which all subfolders, which files are available. In this case, we have one subfolder. Inside the subfolder, you have multiple subfolders, right? It, it is a painstaking process to go and search it and load it. You leave it with folder connector, it takes care of it. As in, you know, as and when new file comes here, uh, you need to refresh it here, but um, manually refreshing it will not work. For example, you have 200 report files are there like this. Each and every file, you cannot open it and click on it, refresh, right? So again, the, even the refresh also, the data refresh also, we can schedule it. That we can do it in Power BI Cloud Service. Okay, we have an option there to schedule the data refresh there. That we will see it down the line, okay? Got it? So in this case, what uh, the advantage is here is you don't have to load each and every file one after the other. And other thing is like, um, um, uh, you know, the, again, you don't have to locate uh, in which subfolders, which files are available. Okay. And also whatever the transformation that you applied it, that one will get applied to your the new file also. For example, I just go here, look here, currently, I have March and April. Let's say, you know, I'm going to say instead of Feb, logically, what I will do is I just copy this as I 
I'll rename this as May month. Let's say a new month, May month data came. And what I do is currently I have only the, look here in this folder, sorry, uh, in this NC daily sales folder, which month's data are there? March and April, only these two months data are available at this moment, right? And also I, I did the refresh here, hence March and April, data only it is reporting the total sales for the March and April. If I push the May month data here, and if I refresh it, it will take into account of the May month data also. And then whatever the data that are available in May month, that one will also get included here. So the, obviously the total sales will be more. But the point what I'm trying to make here is, so for example, here, um, sorry, NC daily sales to, for example, I do some kind of basic data transformation. For example, I don't need this column. I right click on it and remove it. Row ID, I removed it. Please remember that if I remove any column here or if I remove any record, it will not affect the OS files, operating system files. Still, that column and data, whatever you are going to remove, it will be there in that file. So whatever the column that you removed, record that you removed here, that you are doing it in the memory, okay? Fine, I removed the row.id. This is this, I call it as one data pre-processing stop, stop task, okay? And the next one, what I do is I just go here and then I just see here, the order date is not in the proper format. I'm going to convert the date format. Before that, look here, the next to each column, you see ABC and all, right? This is nothing but data type. Order date is nothing but text data type. And if you click on this, you will see all the data types that are available here. So now what I do is I need to convert the date, order date into date data type. Look here, date and date time. But before that, I need to change all the values in the column into a consistent format because somewhere we can see the delimiter, month, date, year. So we can see the month, date, year format here. The month, date, and year got separated by forward slash. But in some uh, values, you can see that it is using hyphen. Somewhere it is using forward slash, somewhere it is in this one. So what I do is I just right click on it, replace values. I'm going to hyphen and then I just use the forward slash. You can do it other way around also. Okay, I'm going to make this data first consistent. Now you can see that the delimiter for the entire data in this order date column are consistent. Okay, for the forward slash only, no hyphen. The next step is I just go here and I'm I'm going to select this date. Instead of that, I'm going to you know select using locale. It is always good you can use the locale because you can use different time zones. Here I'm going to specify date data type, and here I'm going to say English United States. Fine. So what, uh, what are the steps that I carried out? Steps are nothing but the transformation. I removed the first column, the row.id. How can I see that? Look here on the right side under the applied steps. You can see this uh, removed columns, right? You can see it here. If you click on it here, row.id, I removed it. And then next, what I did, I re replaced the values. So replace the hyphen by forward slash and change type with locale. You know, these are the three important formatting or data transformation I did it, okay? So now if I close this and apply, all these steps will be applied for this data model permanently. In addition, if I push any new file in this folder, for example, um, June 1st, the May month data comes here. So even that one is also automated. They will push it here. This is your staging area. So what I do is I just go here and I just kept the backup of that file here. Where is the me here? Yeah, I just copy it. And then here I'm doing it manually, copying this one and pushing it here. But in the real world, this one will get copied automatically. The May month data here. Every month data will get pushed here automatically. Okay. So now if I go and refresh it, 
what will happen is it will take into account of the data that are available in this file and then it will do the total now the total is going to be more when i click on the refresh what is happening we will see what is happening here Five lakh thirteen thousand. The total got changed because we have included a new file in that folder. Okay, so this is fine. This is a common sense. Okay, because I clicked on fresh refresh, it loads all the files that are available in the folder. Sorry, I just cancel it again. I don't want to mistakenly click it. Right, so it, it is doing it. So the point that you need to note down here is. In this file, master.c, if you look here, if I open this, open with, um, okay, Excel. In this file, you will be finding the row.id, right? Row.id. And uh, if I go and look at the data here, for example, if you go to the data set here, whatever the steps, that were applied to the two months initially, the Feb and March, the same transformation, the steps got applied to the new data also automatically. Look here, can you see row.id here? No. The moment when I push this file here and when I clicked on refresh, these steps were applied to this file also. It removed the first row and also it converted the text data type of the order date in this new file into order date automatically, right? All the steps, whatever you apply to the previous file also will get applied to your new file. So probably what you can do is you can, you know, we can push all these steps into a function, right? So that uh, all the uh, common format related um thing right data pre-processing steps you can put it in a single function that function you can invoke it whenever any new files comes automatically it will remove the row.id it will convert the text data type of your order date into date data type but before that it will make sure that it'll check are there any iphone is available in case of any iphone you can replace it all these steps will be applied for your new data also automatically so now you understood the advantage of um, folder connector. So there are some questions like, you know, how can I do parallel processing? Is it possible to do parallel processing? So in this folder, I have 100 files are there, right? So what you do is logically, you keep two separate folders, each folder, you make sure that you are having 50-50 files. In that case, you need to have the two report files. But you can use the same function. If you convert all these steps into a single function, you can use that function for those two report files. Okay. And then um, you can run these two reports, you schedule these two reports simultaneously so that uh, in this folder, let's say you have uh, 20 files, in another folder you have 20 files. These 20 files will get loaded in parallel, but uh, each report will get load the files, you know, one after another only. You understood? That is how we can do the parallel task here. You understood or not? For the sake of uh, Deepa, right? I just, because she is not having IT banner. See, you have an NC daily sales folder. Uh, you, are, you have um, 40 files, okay? Every month, 40 files will be, new files will get pushed here. Okay, folder connector is fine. It goes and picks up these 40 files automatically. I don't have to load it uh, one after other. That is fine. But to load each and every file, even, even though it does, if that has been done automatically, it will take longer time, right? What you do is, you know, you create more than one folder. You keep 20 files here or 10 files here. 
and you know create uh, four folders 10 here 10 here 10 here 10 here so this is nc daily sales one nc daily sales two and three and four but four reports you can use it right are uh, the folder connectors and point it to four different folders and then you schedule the refresh in your power power ba cloud service hence you know these four reports will load the data uh, you know concurrently or simultaneously got it but what will happen is here right the 10 file uh, data will get loaded in a single file single file single file here we have single file all these three things four files you need to merge it okay you need to merge it for that also you can do automation okay So hope you understood um, how to use the folder connector and we discussed about the advantages, okay? Uh, the disadvantage point of view, I could say it doesn't take into account of the duplicate records. In case of uh, any duplicate records, uh, for example, in the March month, the previous month Feb data is also available. It will not take into account of the, it will not remove the duplicate records. See, uh, once the data, load is done once the data gets combined it is the responsibility of you as a ETH developer or the report uh, developer right you need to check are there any duplicate records are there in case of any duplicate you need to address it okay any error records um, you can reject it okay and then you can uh, find out the root cause for the rejected records and then fix it and then reload it that is a different thing altogether. And apart from this, the file type should be same. For example, here in this folder, if you have the mix of CSV file, Excel file, JSON file, it will not work. For example, March data comes in CSV, May data comes in JSON file. Then you cannot use the folder connector. Okay, everything is fine. All the intended files are available in CSV format. In addition to that, we have some other files like um, JSON file, XML file. We cannot create multiple folders. So in that case, what you do is let it be there. When you go to the transform here, you need to filter that one. Okay, you need to filter those files. Okay, so in that case, what will happen is uh, it will take into account of only this. It is a responsibility of you to filter the non-CSV related files or non-Excel files. All the files should be of same type. Remember this. Okay. Okay. So we are done with this one. Next, um, 